more talk than you do. <laughs> Welcome back. Another episode of Smoke Cask and Barrel. Of course, I'm Daryl. I'm Randy. We have a special guest with us today. I'm kind of geeked about that. Go ahead. My name's Kim. I uh, work for West Fork Whiskey. We're a distillery out of downtown Indianapolis. Dope. So, um, we're here. We wanted to have this. Uh, I, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Yeah, you're welcome. My uh, pleasure. Doing this. Um, so, I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to shut up a little bit, and then we'll talk some more, whatever. We already smoking our cigars. We got the cigars going. We got the whiskey poured up. But uh, I'm going to let Kim, West Fork Whiskey, yes. here, downtown Indy. Downtown Indianapolis. And, uh, and yeah. I mean, what, what is your... Let's start, I guess, what's the story? Kind of like what Bill West for it. Yeah, so we have three guys that own it. It's two brothers and their best friend. Okay. They uh, love whiskey, have always loved whiskey, and they basically were like, why is no one in Indiana making good whiskey? We have the limestone. I mean, a lot of limestone comes down from southern Indiana. Yeah. We've got all the corn. And they're like, why are we letting other people make make the whiskey when we could be doing it here? Absolutely. So they... Um, Cash in their 401 OKs and uh, quit their jobs and maxed oh. out all their credit cards and started West Fork. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, like, I feel like a lot of people that make whiskeys, yeah. like, you got to love the whiskey to make a good whiskey. And right. these these boys definitely do. Um, Blake Jones and Julian Jones are the two brothers. Okay. Uh, Julian's our head distiller. Okay. He uh, was in med school, so he's got that chemistry background and all that knowledge there. Um, nice. Blake was in financing, so he's got that side of it. And then David, their best friend that's with them, was an attorney. So oh, it's okay. kind of the perfect they combination. The they got it, they got it, they've got it all right there within themselves. Um, it's named, we're named after the West Fork of the White River. Okay. Had to keep, keep that, keep it low, keep that Indiana in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been distilling for five years. Um, nice. The tasting room opened up three years ago. Okay. Where's the tasting room located at? The tasting room is at 17th and Bellefontaine. Okay. So it's in the Kennedy King neighborhood. Um, it's Caddy Corner or from an art studio. And then there's, uh, it used to be Cannonball Brewery. It's now Scarlet Lane. Okay. Oh, um, so they're all okay. right there on the same okay. corner. Um, the tasting room's absolutely wonderful. Our bartenders make some killer cocktails. So we probably need to go down there. Oh, we need to go there. Yeah, we yeah. have to do that. Yeah. We have to check that out. Man, that's dope. I mean, go all in. I guess, you know, you got a dream. And one thing's for certain uh, with whiskey, I mean, to go all in like that, they definitely uh, wanted to make sure they came with some good stuff. So, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, and that's the thing that's hard about whiskey when you're starting from the ground up is it's hurry up and wait. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta, yeah. You got to get the juice made and get it going, but then you got to put in those barrels and just cross your fingers and hope that it turns out the way you wanted it to. So those first couple of years, it's a lot of trial and error and figuring it out yeah well we've tasted some pretty awful ones here lately we have. <laughs> oh no we never been named never been nameless yeah we will we've had some yeah under wraps get it together but... please uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah and I think I think that's just like what would you say like it's kind of crazy because there's so many um New or craft is still trying to come in. Everybody trying to break in because right now, of course, it's a big bourbon boom. Yeah, um, it's real big everybody's right now because everybody's trying to break, to break it, in. And, yeah, yeah, and it's caused some companies to put out some lackluster products. Yeah, Very they were main nameless, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> to protect the innocent. But uh, well, thankfully, we're not one of them. No, 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 no. Yeah, we've actually been doing pretty well with your bottles though, so especially the cash drain. That, that's I, awesome. I definitely enjoy that. So. Yeah, I know when I came in and uh, did the tasting for the ladies. Right. They it, it went over really well. The ladies all seemed to really enjoy it and got kind of got behind it. So. so what they're talking about, of course, we're in Cosmo Nights, the Cosmo Nights Social Club, the oldest black social club in the Midwest. Um, and they we've been able to feature uh, here Ladies Night. Uh, Kim has come and done some tastings. Uh, shouts out to the uh, the Sass Club, Smoke and Sip Sisters. Yep. Big shouts to them. Um, they had a taste in everything here. Uh, it went very well. We, I mean, we tasted so a lot of great whiskeys. Yeah. Um, had a just great time. Like I said, so much fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Oh, those pink hats. Yeah, oh, those yeah, pink hats. yeah. They step out. So <laughs> definitely want to give them a shout out. Um, what, what what's the whiskey we have here today? We're, we're, we're sampling on. So the one we have here today, uh, we have West Fork whiskeys. That you can find in the tasting room. Um, the Colonel B Street Blues are our two bourbons. We have a rye whiskey. We have an all corn whiskey as well, called All or Nothing, and a white whiskey. Okay. What I brought in today is for our Old Hammer lineup. Okay. Um, it is the 100 proof single barrel. So we kind of noticed that there's been a hole in the single barrel options. A lot of other distilleries, their single barrels are all on back order. 
it's extremely hard to find them. So we're like, you know what, let's fill the hole. We, we've got the capability, the resources to do it. Let's make it happen. So it was originally just going to be 100 proof. And then I said within like three weeks of getting ready to release it, we're like, nope, single barrel 100 proof. Now, is that because of right now, of course, in the pandemic and everything we've had through 20 and still kind of dealing with it here in 21 yeah. and through the end of it, is that... Because the, the single barrel is the, the, um, the hard part of it, or is it just so? I think it's just the the drive for bourbon lately. Okay. Like so many people have gotten into bourbon, and they just you can't make more to release it because it has to sit in the barrels and wait. Right. So everything that they've made with that bourbon bourbon boom, it's depleted a lot of the a lot of the stock that a lot of people have had. So you know, it's not that they're not making the whiskey every day and not getting it out there. It's just the supply and demand yeah. has been has has hit the bourbon community really hard, which is a great problem to have. Yeah. But yeah. then it makes it hard to find certain certain bourbons. And and speaking to that, I I, I we talked about some some lackluster whiskeys we've had. That age is everything, man. You got to yeah. be able to What's age it and get it right. I mean, mm-hmm. to get you get. It just makes a difference. I mean, to spend that time in doing yeah. that and definitely with this. Um, what's the particular mass bill on this? If you so back, back our down. bourbons with the old hammer are all 99% corn, 1% malted barley. So oh. we have three different levels. We have the 80 proof, the 100 proof single barrel, and the cast strength. So that's why they're a little bit sweeter than a lot of other bourbons out on the market. But it really brings out the caramel vanilla notes that everyone's looking for in the bourbons. And me personally, especially our, our uh, the bourbon on the old hammer i get a lot of like fruited fruited uh pitted fruit notes mm-hmm. being, like a bean cherry specifically mm, yeah. on the back side of that um and obviously with a single barrel every barrel is going to be a little, a little bit, bit different, different. Yeah. so and that's the fun of it it's like pick a bottle up try it go out another like a month or two later pick up another bottle and there's gonna be something just slightly different about it and like trying to pick out those notes is part of the fun of that single barrel like, well that's what i mean yeah 99 percent corn i I mean that. I mean honestly, for me, that's amazing. To me, that's amazing because I mean you see a lot of other single barrels or whiskeys where they have kind of you know sixty percent of this and they may throw a rye or whatever the case is. But to what you're saying, I mean the notes off it is just on the nose, getting yeah. the deep cherry and, and getting that sweetness and everything. Mm-hmm. I mean it's it's really complex to be ninety nine percent cool. Yeah. I mean that's why. That's well, the why. Um, old hammer came from. We wanted to bring back some of the Indiana distilling history, and so what we were doing. So Old Hamer is actually a whiskey that was back in the 1800s. This guy named Hugh Hamer had a mm-hmm. corn mill, and instead of charging people to mill the corn, he took excess corn as payment. He milled it down and turned it into whiskey and mm-hmm. sold it up and down the Mississippi as far south as New Orleans. But like a lot of other distilleries, it, prohibition happened and other things happened, and we lost it. So that was this kind of us paying homage to the Indiana distilling history. Nice. And so that's why we went with the mash bill that we went with, because we that's as close as we can get to what he probably did. So we wanted to keep it close yeah. to what he would have originally made. Um, so yeah, yeah, 90% corn, 1% malt of barley. Um, we do a level four char on our barrels. Okay. Um, with a level two on the headstocks. And this one, is, the single barrels will always be at least four years old. At least four years old. Yeah, nice. as we get definitely. older, the whiskeys will get older as well. Um, we definitely always put some back that were aging longer than the others, but we also have to pull whiskey to sell to... Okay, so yeah. can I ask, I don't know if yeah. you can say this or not, is there a, a possible uh, older uh, aged... Uh, uh, I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a 10-year Yeah, 10 years or whatever, maybe yeah, possible. Yeah, probably about five years there five, might okay. be a <laughs> I'm asking for Actually, myself. You know right? what? It probably would be really amazing that 10 years, though. Because I mean, yeah. in four years, if that's, I mean, right. how, good, how good it is exactly. at four years. Yeah, exactly. and me so, yeah. particularly, like, I personally prefer them between 8 to 12 years. I feel like after 12 years, they just get so oaky. And it's like, can't, yeah. that's all they I can taste on. Like, yeah. I, anyone who likes, you know, the path of 23 and 25 years and the 18 years, like, more power to you. I, get it i just me I personally <laughs> me personally i i just prefer the eight to twelve year mark like in that range i think that's when you're hitting those, those perfect notes yeah. and really getting yeah. the best flavor you can out of the barrel without it becoming over oat what's your sweet spot for proof for you personally? oh dude the bigger the better the bigger the better yeah okay. like, i really love this hundred proof just because see, see, it, it she's sits, on your team it sits, <laughs> it sits really beautifully on the palate yes um but 
for me, when you're hitting the cast strength or the barrel proofs, yeah. it's just a fuller, richer flavor because it's not being tapered down to hit that proof. Yeah. So I feel like whiskey is tasting the way it should when it's barrel proof. I've got some. I've got some cast strength in my bar at home. I know. I think it's like one twenty something. I can't mm-hmm. remember that, but it's yeah. I like the high proof. My sweet spot. I don't know, Randy. He's different, but my sweet so spot. Likes him a little bit weaker. Just a little. Bit. He likes a little bit. <laughs> I, I, so, no, but I, 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 I will drink the hundred and thirties, the hundred and twenties, or whatever. But, but it's ones, like, eh. it's, you know, go home and you're sipping on one for the night. Exactly. Enjoying yeah. it, really savoring the flavor. See, that's where my problem but is. See, I, I got to have two. You don't <laughs> get all of that, all of the notes you want out of the high, higher proofs. A lot of times you don't. First that's one true. is like it don't. hits you, and it's like, okay, yeah. do I want another one? Of these? Yeah. Well, that's one thing I've had a lot of fun with when I've been doing the tastings. And the samplings out and around town for the last since June. Um, a lot of people don't know how to properly taste whiskey for the first time. They're like, oh, I don't really drink whiskey. It's like, have you really given it a shot? Right. Like, right. have you actually had someone walk you through how to taste it so you actually get the flavor of it and not that first burn? See, and that's the thing that most people say, oh, it burns. It burns, burns yeah. Burn. yeah. Back in my throat. But you've got to get over it. Yeah. Over it. It's just like, it's yeah. Of, like, think of it as like a warm hug. Exactly. It's yeah, warm and hey, look, that's what we call it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, when I've been down to the distilleries in Kentucky, they call it the Kentucky Hub. Yeah. Like, it's just, it warms you up. This is one thing I really like about ours is you get that warmth, but it dissipates quickly. Yeah. There are some bourbons that I've drank where it burns and, and it, it has warmed up, but it lingers. Yeah. Yeah. And I can feel the burn five, six minutes later after I've taken that first drink. Right. Where ours, I feel like it warms you up, but then it just kind of mellows out really, really quickly. And then you're ready for another drink rather yeah. than sitting there going, okay. <laughs> through it, I got it now. I need some right. water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, I I get uh, for me on my no, on the nose. I get a lot of cherry. I get a lot of good mm-hmm. vanilla. Of course, the caramel one, but some of the oak as well. Uh, for me, on See, the nose I, of it, I, I get all of that. But I taste like a peach somewhere mm-hmm. down the line. Uh, yeah. I'm getting peaches mm. from some peach of it. Yeah, so, yeah. I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I mean. I love the way it sits on the palate too. It's very viscous. It coats. It coats it so mm-hmm. well. It the coats it so well. Really oh man, great. it's great. It's, yeah. Well, it's one of my favorite things about bourbon. I've been drinking bourbon since I was, we'll say 21. Right. There you go. <laughs> responsible. Be responsible. Responsible drinking. Be responsible drinking. Um, I would go into the college house parties when I was in school and they'd have those really shitty light beer kegs and mm-hmm. I'd bring my own bottle of Jack because I didn't want anything to do with that shitty keg beer. I was going to have a good time and drink some Jack. Um, and then my parents had a houseboat down in Kentucky on Green River and the boat, the, their boat neighbor that was on the dock right next to them saw, I'm 22, 23 years old and he's like, you're drinking whiskey, huh? He's like, why don't I show you how to actually drink whiskey? Nice. So at 22, 23, I had this this um, old neighbor. He's like probably in his 60s at the time. He had, I say, 70 different bottles of bourbon on his boat. Mm. So Whoa. whenever I drive down from Chicago to Kentucky to visit my family, I'd always stay for like a week on the boat. It's like if I'm making that drive, yeah, I'll make it worth well, my time. Yeah. And every day he'd bring me on the boat and sample me on three or four more whiskeys. Okay. Uh, and so at a very young age, for someone who drinks bourbon, I got introduced to some really great bourbons at a very young age. Nice, and, I, and I've nice. been hooked. Definitely nice. Hooked ever since. Nice. <laughs> you know, so I, I honestly believe that there should be a class on how to drink bourbon. Oh, because yeah. Not everybody gets it. No, and like once your once your palate's kind of gotten used to it, and then you can actually pull out the different notes on right. the bourbons, and you get the appreciation for how it's made, where it's made. It's it's this whole different thing. Like it's bourbon's not just a drink; it's a hobby. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Don't judge us. Those <laughs> like, are our children, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they collect allocated bourbons and bourbons like they're baseball cards when they were kids. Yeah. Like, they, it's, they've got. All the different bourbons, and they know everything about all of them, and thoroughly enjoy all of them for their own reasons. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that that's one thing I love about it too is everyone's palate is so different. True, true. So it can be appreciated on different levels for different reasons. So like, someone may go, "Oh man, I really, really don't like Basil Hayden," but then the person sitting next to him is like, "This is the best, best thing ever, ever. right?" Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 It's, so it's it's yeah. I just think it, there's so much fun. Involved so, with the drinking. Let me ask you this: What's yeah. retail on this? Uh, retail on the single barrel is twenty nine ninety nine. 
Really? Twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine ninety nine. Some stores, I mean, obviously you might see it. I've a seen it as high difference. as like thirty four ninety nine. Still. But for a single barrel and how good that whiskey is, it's a really great price on it. That is. And that's nice. one of the things the the boys wanted to do, Blake and Julian and David. They wanted to make great whiskey at an approachable price. They don't think you should have to pay a hundred and fifty, hundred eighty dollars. On a bottle of bourbon to have good bourbon. I mean, he says like a, man, it is, I paid a couple hundred dollars for bourbon and it is, I poured oh. it down the drain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Word, yeah. So, so just because it's expensive doesn't, doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was a quick tip telling you right now. Just because you paid <laughs> two hundred, or hundred and fifty, or eighty-five, ninety dollars for that bottle does not make it a great bottle. Um, the juice is everything. So I mean, you, you find your palate, discover it. Um, and, and buy what you like Drink what you like With that um, Just because it's gotta be In the name Yeah it Yeah It's yeah. the best whiskey out there It doesn't mean it's bad It doesn't mean it's I, bad I, I enjoy me some of those uh, Yeah the, well, the bees You know The yeah. bakers The bakers yeah. The blades yeah. uh, Basil And I really enjoy all those But, but that price point is great It doesn't have to be great. one of those To be a great whiskey It doesn't it's, That price point is great Especially Because even out of some of those You just named I don't think they're great whiskeys No they're, so, they're, yeah. they're adequate yeah. yeah, they're palatable. Exactly. They're good whiskeys, but they're not mind blowing great whiskeys. Yeah, I think the best one that I've had out of all the ones I've drank is obviously ours. Ours is the best I've ever had. You gotta do it. You gotta do yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Um, right. I, I really enjoyed Kentucky Owl. Okay. And it's not one that you hear people talk about a lot. It's right. not one that people go out searching for a lot. Right. But it, it was. It's just a really. So that, that's crazy bourbon. you say that though, because I have a couple bottles of Kentucky Owl. And every time the confiscated, every time I've tried to give someone that, they're like, "Oh no, it's too harsh. It, it burns. It's like, you can't appreciate it. That, yeah. that, that's the problem." Yeah, so, and that's what, like I, I got some it. friends that were like, "They're like, teach me. I want to learn. I want to learn." I'm like, "Okay, well, if you want to learn, like, you've got to actually be open, open to it. Yeah. You can't just go, oh, bourbon's a hot thing right now, and I want to be a bourbon drinker. Like, right. you got to actually be open to it, willing to learn about it, let your palate adapt. I mean, it's just like when we're kids, like, you have that first beer, it's you don't like it. You got your palate got to develop and it's got to, you got to kind of learn about it a little bit. Well, we've got this wonderful old Hamer single barrel and uh, you see we have our cigars. I'm smoking the Placentia Alma Fuerte. This is the uh, box press hexagon, which is a pretty full body cigar. Um, and it's pairing with this real good. It's, it's actually surviving. Like cigar normally, this cigar can overpower a lot of whiskeys. Mm -hmm. It just does a lot of times, and a lot of times you and you know you'll find if you're smoking the placentias, those who are they, they'll try to you know proof up their drink, get the high proofs. But this is actually, I mean, it's pairing really well. It is. It's yeah. bringing some other notes out with it. So I mean, I'm happy with it. And this is anyways my favorite cigar. I've been going to for a long time right now. Anyway, <laughs> everybody's favorite. Cigar, it's. I mean, so. hey, what can I say? Would you? What do you? So what, go ahead, Kim. I'm gonna ask it because. I can't smoke anything heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I probably smoke maybe four to five cigars a year. But oh. I, when I do it, I really enjoy them. I take it in. like. But So I can't really do anything too harsh. Um, There's I got, nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, I gotta keep it light. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I love the flavor of a cigar with the bourbon. Like it just, I feel like they go together perfectly. Yeah. Of course. Like you couldn't pick another, a better drink to pair with a cigar. Absolutely. So I went with a fat bottom Betty leather rolls today. I'm on my softer side, so don't don't, don't throw anything at me. <laughs> but actually, it, 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 yeah, right. don't judge. They yeah. gonna burn in the comments. but it's going really well with this. I mean, it's got that sweetness, but the bourbon had a little sweetness to it as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it it brought it together. That's what this is actually. As I said, this is actually bringing a lot of sweetness out in this cigar itself. So, deep chocolate flavors notes you know what i mean because this is just heavy chewy but it's pairing with this because it's also giving me the good sweetness that's bouncing out with the mm -hmm. bourbon um, so the bourbon's actually pulling some of the sweetness out of it the is it is it is yeah. it's, I'm, it's, and actually, it's kind i of would nice. probably do this again and yeah I don't smoke these so. <laughs> i smoke i actually smoke the, the leather rose a lot actually I, you know, on the golf course a lot anyway i do i definitely do so yeah, hmm, i have to try some more stuff my like second one ever yeah. <laughs> so again real quick what so we've got the single barrel here, but what yeah. what are all the offerings if you can for West Fork? Yeah, so for the old hammer line we have we have a bourbon and we have a rye. Okay. In the bourbon selection we have an eighty proof. That's kinda of what that's what I keep around the house for my friends that come over that want to mix their whiskey. Yeah. 
mix it. Hurt my heart, yeah. Hurt my heart, it's yeah. It's fine. Here, here's the A-proof. Mix it. It's fine. I don't keep anything else in my house. I'd actually let anyone mix. Right. Um, then we have the 100-proof single barrel, which we just released right before Christmas. Okay. So uh, liquor stores are picking it up, and it's getting out there, but it is probably a little bit harder to find because okay. it's just not as widespread as some of our others. Um, you can find it at West Clay Wine and Spirits. Um, Vine and Table has it in Carmel. Um, Payless Liquors, Crown Liquors, um, the Big Reds have picked it up. So it's getting out there. Okay. Um, we're still, like some of the mom and pops are a little bit slower on the uptake sometimes. Okay. So we're, still, we're trying to get into the mom and pop liquor stores. Um, Community Spirits carries the Old Hammer stuff. Absolutely. Um, so those are the bigger ones that you can find throughout central Indiana. Okay. Um, we started to get down into Jeffersonville and New Albany and Evansville. Nice. Getting some, okay. some spots up in Fort Wayne that's carrying our product. So we're, we're getting we're getting out there. Nice, nice. Um, we actually just picked up into um, some states out on the East Coast. Mm. Um, mm. We're officially in Tennessee now and Illinois as well. Really? Oh, wow. So, okay. so we're growing. Yeah. We're uh, getting some good things behind us. Yeah. But yeah, after the 100 proof, we have the cast drink in the bourbon. Okay. Um, it usually sits between 117 to 120 proof, depending on where the barrel of it when we when we pulled it. Okay. Um, and we also have our rye. Um, our rye is a little bit different than a lot of other ryes because most ryes are about, I'd say between 85 to 100 percent rye on their mash bill, so they get that real big, spicy and heavier mouthfeel to it. Since we are Indiana, we wanted it to stay very corn forward. Okay. So our rye is just legally a rye. It's only 51 percent rye. Just 51 percent. Okay. 51 percent rye. Um, 45% corn, 4% malted barley. So okay. with all that corn in there, it rounds it out really nicely. Um, we like to call it a gateway rye or an okay. introduction, inter introductory rye. Okay. So your bourbon drinkers who are looking to try to get into rye but haven't really made that leap yet, it's a great right. one to start you got drinking. a transitional period. With yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's also perfect for rye cocktails okay. because that corn rounds it out and sweetens it up a little bit. So you still get the spice and the complexity and that really great mouthfeel of a rye. But it's not overpowering. It's not so spicy that you're like, okay, hey, I'm having one, I'm done, like that's it. <laughs> yeah. um, the rye, particularly for me, sits really beautifully in an old fashioned or a sour. If okay. you're actually making okay. cocktails at home. I drink I'm like an old fashioned. I, I, I like an occasional old fashioned. I'm not a old cocktail person. Judge me. Yeah, I'm not I, a cocktail person. I love person. the old fashioned. Especially I love it, really yeah. good. Oh one. man, I like an occasional. It's not one. straight. Don't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I like an occasional old fashioned. I, 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 I personally usually drink mine straight or on the rocks. In the summertime, I usually throw it on the rocks. It's just so hot outside. Like, yeah. But I am. I'm that person that but like. That's where the old fashions come in. They're drinking their margaritas by the pool, and I'm like, uh, uh, just give me, just throw me a rock and my whiskey, and I'm good. Um. And so the rides are really wonderful for that, and that's our Old Hammer line, and then okay. we also have our West Fork, which is our artisan line. Okay. Um, and that's, we have the Kernel, which is a weeded bourbon. Okay. We have our B Street Blues, which is a high rye bourbon. Okay. Um, the Rider's Block is our rye. So we I don't have, think I've tasted that. I mean, just well, the Rider's Block is not in distribution. You can okay. only okay. get it at the tasting room. Okay. okay. So another reason for you guys to go to the no, tasting room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then we have our All or Nothing, which is also tasting room only. Oh, okay. Um, it's an all corn whiskey. And it's actually, if you talk to everyone that works at the distillery, it tends to be a staff favorite. Okay. Because like, oh, really? not very many all corn whiskeys are really all that. No. Um, so which one is the white whiskey? The two hour delay. That was okay. the last one. That one I, I like. I I've really never had it. I've never had it. Yeah. I've yeah. never had it. She bought it up one day. Yeah, okay. I brought it up when I did the I probably had about two or three tastes. <laughs> 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 so I kept going back. Yeah, back, yeah going and back. white whiskey's different. I yeah, mean most it's definitely. basically it touches the barrel and then it's out. Um, that's actually what we started with, with really? just the white whiskey because they that, needed it gave to have juice to moonshine feel. It does have a moonshine feel to it. Yeah. But you can definitely tell it's whiskey. Exactly. Mm, like it's exactly. not like it's just a white spirit that like the flavor notes are there and it's actually the two hour delay is our all or nothing it's just not aged Gosh. so it is an all corn whiskey um, but it's great if you're if you've got friends that are not whiskey drinkers but you're trying to get them turned on to it and they like cocktails um, at our tasting room we have what we call um, elixirs so when the lockdown first happened and COVID first hit everybody really hard our um, our bar manager and our head bartender came up with these elixirs. So basically the cocktails that you would get in house, they put all the mixers into this bottle so you can take it home and make a craft cocktail. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Okay. So it's, they, nice. like we have um, some that are available at Payless and Crown. Um, we have an old fashioned mix. 
that is based off of our household fashion. We're going to do some old fashions on the show. And uh, we have a smash. So we can do a whiskey smash. Yeah. But what, if you go to the tasting room, they actually have I probably seven or eight different ones. Okay. And they we have a margarita one. We have a strawberry oh, really? one. We have like a mango thing. We have a blueberry. like, And it's all cocktails that you could get at West Fork if you're sitting in the tasting room. And we made it so you could take it home with you. Wow. Nice. But it's, it's, it is it's, nice. it's really wonderful. My mother does not drink whiskey. Like when she sees me get through a half a bottle of whiskey, like when we've been like having a like mm-hmm. play euchre, and we'll sit down and we drink for like five or six hours and play cards, and I get halfway through a bottle of whiskey, and she's like, hmm. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like, right, right. But uh, she will drink the white whiskey mixed with our elixirs. Oh, so like, okay. part- she loves the strawberry margarita one, the mango one. So just throw with that white whiskey in there, and your non-whiskey drinkers will start to like whiskey. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're very Kill welcome. West Fork. You see what they're offering. We have the single barrel here in front of us. Definitely look them up. Uh, Want to give actually, that? Actually, to pour some of the We got some. Yeah, we, uh, Cosmos does have the Colonel. I can't think of what Beast else. Street the B Street Blues, and I know they go the Cash. Uh, the Cash Street. Cash Street is yeah. as well. And hopefully, so, maybe the hundred proof soon. Yeah, hopefully soon. Yeah. Most yeah. definitely, because uh, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. It's a it's a really yeah. wonderful whiskey. When I tasted the um, the ladies on it, we hadn't even released it yet. Oh really? So they kind of like we were starting to push it out on the market, and I think the first store picked it up about a week after the ladies tasted it. Nice. Like we had the sample bottles so that we could start selling it to places, and I was like, you know what? If we're selling it to places, I want these girls to try it, so they go out looking for it. Nice. So they they had a little yeah little, little little preview, preview before before it was hit the market, um, and they they really they really loved it. It was it was great. So Cosmos has it. We we'll definitely give a shout out to our title sponsor, Community Spirits. Visit them at their locations. They definitely have some old Hamer. Mm-hmm. And all the West Fork products, they have them there at their location. Big shout to Charles and the family there. Thank you again. And we wanted to give a shout out to our cigar brother, Prime 357 Cigars. Thank you again for all that you do and provide for us on this channel. And again, thank you to Kim. Thank you to West Fork Whiskey. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, I hope y'all got some good stuff out of this. I mean, there's a lot of good information. This is what we want to bring. We want to bring something to you. Uh, kind of give you some behind the scenes. We'll give you some real good information on what's out there. I mean, this is local, and I mean, it is an amazing bottle. This is an amazing bottle. I, I'm, I'm, I'll sign, I'll put my stamp on this. is good. Yeah, that was This good. is really I good. I love it when so. bourbon drinkers are thoroughly impressed. Yeah, yeah this is good. good. This Actually, is good. I'll just have one more. Right, have one more. <laughs> yeah, have a little more. Yeah. <laughs> so, with that being said, this has been another episode of Smoke Cask and Barrel. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.